That's fun, huh? Ted Lingity is a retired ski racer now. He is one of the best turners in the world. A legend in the skiing world. Ted is the GOAT. Ted will always be Mr. GS. So consistent. He transformed the skiing, finds the clean ski at all costs. There's no one who's perfected their craft in GS as much as Ted has. I'm Jamie Salter. I'm VP Engineering at Carve. My name's Charlie. I'm the lead data scientist at Carve. We're going to use Carve and the technology we've built over the past eight years to see why it's almost impossible to ski like Ted Ligeti. Hi, so how'd you do? I get it first. All right, cool. Hey, I'm Ted Ligeti, two-time Olympic champion, five-time world champion. Remember as like a little kid, like just loving going fast. My buddies and I, we go free ski the mountain, like seeing who could lay it over the furthest, you know? Oh, we can drag our knuckles on the snow. This is awesome. And then like elbows, then like trying to drag our armpits. That opened actually a whole new world. I was not a good racer as a beginner. I was, you know, getting my butt kicked by 10 seconds, you know, at that age. So I still love the process of it, which is, I guess, why I stuck with it. Oh, and Ted Ligeti coming Ligeti split across the finish line. All right. Fastest time so far, 2.6. All right. So we spent the last eight years developing technology to measure skiing. So we put an insole inside your ski boot. It contains 36 pressure sensors and a motion sensor. It measures your motion and pressure data 20 times a second. This enables us to get a picture of how you're skiing, what are your edge angles doing, what's your outside pressure, are you leaning forwards, how are you rolling your skis? And we can then assemble this all together to create a picture of how your technique stacks up and how it looks relative to our data set of skiers, but also what you need to do to improve. When you ski a turn, you ski it in a particular way. You have a particular edge angle. You have a particular pressure distribution. And that's kind of like a fingerprint. And we wanted to see, are we able to understand Ted's turn and what makes that unique? What does his fingerprint look like? And can we take some of those insights and use them to make you a better skier? To do that, we had to have him ski with Carve. Ted is the absolute master. He was winning races by more than two seconds when they're often won in milliseconds. And we were pretty nervous leading into this test because this was the first time that we were gonna be able to test with one of the world's greatest skiers ever. We couldn't fuck this up. Hey, we're in Solden, Austria just on the other side of the glacier from where they're having the World Cup race for the first race to start off the season. And we're over here on this side, ripping some arcs. We haven't used a ton of tech in our training before. We do a lot of like video related stuff for analyzing our skiing. It'll be interesting to see the, the data Carve gets for sure. I'm used to being judged by a timer. I'm a little skeptical to see uh, if it can actually like, capture what goes on in my skiing well, because I mean, I know how I feel, but it'll be interesting to see if they can uh, capture that same kind of feeling and thoughts that I have into the, into the data. Car activated. Let's see it.
So let's have a look at the data. We collected data from TED on a variety of different terrains. And what we saw was so unique and different to anything that we had in a data set that it really changed what we think about skiing and how we measure it. Let me show you how Carve sees the world. Every time you turn, Carve is measuring your motion and pressure at 20 times a second. We then combine all the turns that you do in a run into one average turn graph, which is your signature of how you're skiing. To help you understand what we're looking at, let's start by analyzing a normal skier. Let me take you through one of my average turn graphs. On the x-axis here, we see the time through the turn. So on the left is when I'm starting the turn, and at the end, it's when I'm ending that turn and about to start the next one. On the y-axis, we're seeing my edge angle, and you can see that I've got a higher edge angle that's reaching about 60 degrees on my outside ski and a lower edge angle on my inside ski. Now, I've skied all my life, but I'm not a very good comparison to Ted. So we found a top-level ski instructor who's in the top five of our leaderboard who skis on the carb system. So let's have a look at their data. The first thing that jumps out is that their edge angle they're achieving through this turn is significantly higher than mine. So they're reaching edge angles of around 70 degrees on their outside ski, where I'm only barely touching 60. And the final thing to call out is the similarity, the edge similarity of the inside and the outside ski. So I have a very high edge angle for me on my outside ski, but a pretty rubbish edge angle on my inside ski, and that's known as an A-frame. Whereas this instructor is much more similar. Those edges are tracking, and that allows them to do a tighter turn and control their speed. Now let's look at the master. What does Ted look like? Ted's turns have a reputation. They're known to be some of the cleanest in the World Cup circuit. He gets on a very high edge angle. He can hold that edge angle and he can carve a really tight arc. He carves where others did. And so the question was, will we see that in the data? And the answer is yes. So where that instructor was phenomenal data, Ted's is really another level. But you can see here that Ted's reaching an even higher edge angle. And for context, this is on a similar blue slope. So he's reaching 80 degrees where the top instructor was only reaching 70. But the thing that got us really excited is how much Ted is able to build his edging once he reaches it. Then you can see that Ted has put a totally different shape down on this graph. So whilst the top instructor is reaching that edge angle and then falling off that edge, Ted reaches that edge angle and then continues to build. So he only reaches his peak about 40 to 50% through the turn, and then is building it and sustaining a really high edge angle right the way through. This enables him to carve a really tight arc and to control and keep speed all the way through to the next turn. Yeah, in a race, like, you really want to be able to, like, hold your edging a long time to pull the radius around, but also use that rebound out of the ski. Having that high edge angle was, uh, was really important to me, to control yourself when you're under that high G-force load. Ted's high progressive edge build means he's doing more of the turn at a higher edge angle. The higher edge angle, the tighter the turn, and the greater the g-force. This means Ted's having to manage a huge amount of force during the turn. And what's really special about his ability to manage that pressure is that he does it in such a smooth way. So comparing Ted with a normal skier like Jamie, we can see Jamie's application in pressure is much more jerky. Ted is clearly a better skier on a blue run, but it was when we took Ted onto a black run that he really came into his own. So if we compare Ted's run on the blue run to a 46% gradient black run, we can barely tell the difference. Most of us get worse as the train gets harder, whereas Ted actually gets better. His edge similarity is improved because his inside ski is tracking his outside ski in a more similar way. Now, it's interesting to see that my inside ski, you know, tracks up at the same angle. Like, both arcs are kind of perfectly parallel. That was actually something like, I worked on a lot, like, really trying to consciously driving my inside knee and trying to keep my shins parallel. And 
inside ski was able to arc like a really tight radius as well. Comparing this to the instructor, at the start of the turn, the trajectories of the edge angle are actually pretty similar. But that's where the similarities end. Ted is able to reach a higher edge angle, approaching 80 degrees, and he builds this edge angle throughout the turn. We've never seen someone being able to perform such a turn on such a steep run. This is really what is setting Ted apart, his ability to carve a clean arc on a 46% gradient slope. Ted's pressure, it's really a similar story to his edging. It's identical to what we saw when he was on a, just a gentle blue slope. He's on a steep black, and he's still performing the same type of turn. And you can see it in the pressure. He's got this smooth buildup of pressure that's then peaking about exactly two thirds of the way through the turn, and he's releasing it as he prepares for his next turn. Now, let's compare this to the top instructor, who's building that pressure up, but holding it right to the end of the turn. They're trying to slow themselves down, and that's causing them problems. I mean, it pretty much the turn is ended, and they still got wet on that outside ski. And this means that they're going to really struggle to re-sensor and get over the front of their ski as they enter the next turn. And so you can see, compared to Ted's data, he has a much cleaner build-up and release. And this enables him to have a really solid platform as he enters each turn. Yeah, I mean, that's like what we try to do in racing all the time is like load the pressure and then off of it really quickly to take that rebound in the next turn. It's been incredible to be able to unpick and measure what's so special about Ted's turn. And for us, it was just astonishing to see the reputation that he had to put down these super clean high edge angles we saw in the data. And it really came to life on the steeps. We don't have anything like that in our data set. Normally, there's a level at which every skier struggles to maintain a carving turn. And for Ted, we just didn't find it. So is it impossible to ski like Ted? Well, yes and no. If you're a regular skier and you're on a blue run, there are certainly things that you can take. You can learn to get a higher early edge angle so you can roll those edges earlier. You can look at progressive edge builds, so trying to maintain and build that edging through the turn. These are real hallmarks of what we saw in Ted skiing. And working on these in the blue will probably get you closer to the legend. But when it comes to skiing like Ted on a steeper run, it's going to be very difficult unless you dedicate your entire life. Ted showed that he could just maintain identical technique on a blue run to a black run. It's something that we'd never seen before. But the real question is, how far can you push Ted? That's pretty wild to see all the various things that they're able to analyze in these just like little footbed pieces that are going inside my boot. I'm actually really shocked by how well it's able to measure every little piece of the turn to be able to see like the edge similarity from inside to outside ski, how the edge angle ramps up and like the rate of ramp and this like where the pressure drops off, like all those pieces of my skiing that I feel, it's pretty crazy to see on like a screen in graphs. Yeah, we never really had any data when we were racing. So it was just like, it was our times at the bottom and our video and we did some overlays to be able to pick this out like in real time would be really interesting because then like the whole feedback loop is so much faster. Yeah, this would be a game changer. I think even like for a coach to be able to like look at that, your athlete is coming down, then you can be able to see this data and you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense that you're feeling this and you can kind of dictate some of the interventions around that I think too. It's a cool way to like continually measure your skiing objectively and then you can like keep tweaking and pushing various objective criteria further and further and start working on these little things in, in an objective way because otherwise you're just you know guessing feeling or having somebody tell you but to actually measure it is really valuable.